Welcome, class of 2024, parents, families, and friends. Uh, I'd like to begin by thanking our staff, Colleen Lieberts especially, who put this together. Uh, it's a big effort, and everybody has done a great job, and we are going to do a great job, even in unusual circumstances. Before we kick this off and uh, we go through um, a few speeches, I'd like to have everybody uh, introduce themselves first. There's a lot of people here, uh, even though here is a little strange this year, that are ready to help you as soon as you get to campus or even if you're not on campus. Uh, they're usually on stage here with 900 of you in the audience, uh, but this year is obviously a little unusual. So we're going to begin by going around the room and introducing ourselves so you can see the people who are ready to help you as soon as you have any reason to contact them. So let me start with Anna Maria Oloa Shields, our Associate Dean of Student Success. Anna Maria. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Carnegie Mellon and Dietrich College. As Richard said, my name is Anna Maria Oloa Shields, Associate Dean for Student Success. So in addition to being an academic advisor of several of the first year students, I work with faculty, staff, both in and outside the college to ensure your students have a wonderful experience throughout their time in the college. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jay Devine, Associate Dean for Undergraduate Studies in Dietrich College. And for those of you who may ultimately participate in our Senior Honors Program, I direct that program. I also happen to be the university's pre-law advisor. Welcome once again to Carnegie Mellon. Welcome, everyone. My name is Sharon Carver, and I'm Dietrich's Associate Dean for Educational Affairs which means that I work with undergraduates and graduate students, and I'm particularly focusing on the core curriculum, which involves your first year Grand Challenge courses and all of the courses that sort of help you get broad in terms of your academic studies. Good morning, everyone. My name is Gina Matusi. I am the Assistant Director in Deidre College Academic Advisory Center, and I am one of the first year advisors. I'm Sylvia Obey. I'm an academic advisor in Dietrich College Academic Advisory Center, and I work with first year students and undeclared sophomore students. Hi, everyone. I'm Corey Dandoy. I am an academic advisor in the Information Systems Program in Dietrich College, and I am so excited to be working with the incoming class. Hi everyone, I'm Mark Patterson. I direct the Quantitative Social Science Scholars Program and I'm a faculty in the Social and Decision Sciences Department. Hi, I'm Tim Haggerty. I direct the Humanities Scholars Program and I, am also, I also teach in the History Department. Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Colleen Leibertz. Uh, I work in the Academic Advisory Center, uh, managing a variety of programs that support the academic advising staff. Hi everyone, my name is Kim Pyatt and I'm the manager of the Pittsburgh Summer Internship Program and I wanna welcome you all to the CMU community. Hi everyone, my name is Joe Badalini and I'm a career consultant in the Career and Professional Development Center I specifically work with teacher college students. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kristen Stanton. I am also a career consultant in the Career and Professional Development Center. Along with Joe, I'll be working with uh, Dietrich College students on your career and professional development issues, and I'm excited to meet you all. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. My name's Eric Tatra. I'm an assistant director in enrollment services, and I'm the hub liaison for the Dietrich College and can answer any questions you have about financial aid, student accounts, or the registrar's office. Good morning, everyone. My name is Roshan Istral. I'm a senior in Dietrich College, and I'm also an orientation leader. Thank you, everyone. It's great to see everyone here. And um, I want to say a few words before I introduce Roshni, uh, and then Jay Devine will say a few words, and then you will be on your way to orientation. So although some of you are still home uh, and will be participating remotely this fall, 
many of you are here in Pittsburgh and you're about to step into quite an adventure. So dropping off students, sending them off to college uh, is complicated and emotionally intense, especially this year. So you students need to be tolerant of the bizarre behavior uh, that your parents might be exhibiting. Now, I have three daughters, so I've been through it, which is not to say I've figured it out. When my wife and I dropped off our first daughter, we lingered far too long and practically had to be escorted off campus by the police. When we finally did drive away, we had to pull the car off the road to find more Kleenex. We had spent nearly two decades building a family, and now the world was conspiring to begin tearing it apart. And this was what's supposed to happen. When we dropped off our third daughter in 2008, whose Indian nickname growing up was Resistance is Futile, things were a little different. According to Katie, we pulled up to the dorm to drop her off, but never actually came to a complete stop. Now that's a bit of an exaggeration, but we did head straight for a good restaurant and ordered a glass of champagne, even though it was only lunchtime. And the next day, we smiled and we chanted, empty nest, empty nest, all the way home from Boston to Pittsburgh. But then a few days later, I came downstairs on a Saturday morning to find my wife weeping alone at the kitchen table. So students, although you are probably itching to send your parents on their way or ask them to leave you alone if you're living at home, remember that they are people. People who have invested a large chunk of their life in raising you, and they're going through a complicated set of powerful emotions. Unfortunately, you are entering college in a very strange and difficult moment, the time of COVID. The bad news is that you are going to have to wear masks and physically distance and do many things on Zoom even though you are here. The good news is that the Mariana Brown Dietrich College of Humanities and Social Sciences is among the finest institutions of higher learning on the planet, and we are probably better situated to handle hybrid or remote learning than anyone. And let me walk you through a few slides to help make that point vivid and to situate the college you are about to enter. Dietrich offers an education that is highly interdisciplinary, highly applied, and highly relevant. The result is that our students are among the most sought after in the world. The class of 2019, the most recent for which we have data, graduated a bit over a year ago, and they have done stunningly well. 90% of them answered our survey, and of those, Almost 94% are either gainfully employed in graduate school or pursuing a passion like volunteering or military service. If you want to pursue a graduate degree, then you'll be well suited to apply to the top places in the world. If you want to go straight to work, then you will be better situated than almost anyone to get a great first job. So college is not about your starting salary, but I know your parents are interested, so I will brag just a little bit. The median starting salary of 2019 graduates was $80,000. Even more impressive, the average starting salary of our English majors was $72,000. Over the last five years, Dietrich students have the highest average starting salaries upon graduation of any humanities and social sciences college in the country. And here's the thing, you guys are better, at least on paper, than any of those previous classes. So you're entering college with masks on, but we all fully expect that when you graduate in 2024, the virus will be tamed and we will once again be filling Gessling Stadium for commencement. After graduation, some of you will move into a first job while others pursue a graduate degree or do something else and then move to a first job. Several years later, perhaps in 2030, you will either have moved to a different company or perhaps gotten a promotion or two in the company you started with or even start your own company. What is the biggest factor influencing how well you will fare between your first job and where you are in your career in 2030? Whether you can learn new skills. <clears throat> no matter how well you are trained in college, your specific technical skills will be obsolete in five years. 
and to move from a first to a second job, to pursue a career, you need to know how to learn. So that is what you should attend to while you are here, how to learn. Now we have world-leading research on the science of learning, and we've done that for 40 years. So we know a lot about how to learn. First, get active. In a recent study we conducted on a MOOC teaching introductory psychology that we modified, we measured learning gain as a function of passive reading, passive video watching, and active exercises with feedback. The results were vivid. Active learning was over six times more effective. And in follow-up studies, we estimate the effect at between six and 15 times. Second, get out of your comfort zone. If you're a stats ML major, don't take a 12th course in stats on convex optimi optimization. Take a course on the history of social movements. If you're a modern languages major, don't take a 12th course on early modern French literature. Take a course in digital humanities. If you're a social sciences major, take a course to learn a language. Third, embrace high impact experiences outside of the classroom, like internships, community service, undergraduate research, and study abroad. These will provide the opportunities for you to apply what you've learned and discover what you haven't learned that you should. They will broaden you and they will help you throughout your life. Now we have worked extremely hard to create large numbers of great opportunities for these sort of high impact experiences. For example, in 2017, Cameron Dively, a Dietrich alum and I, together created the Pittsburgh Summer Internship Program. The PSIP matches nonprofits, government orgs, and startups in Pittsburgh who can't afford to pay interns with Dietrich students who want a great summer experience but can't afford to work for free. We pay the stipend and organize the experience. And we immediately attracted great organizations like 412 Food Rescue, WESA, Just Harvest, and many others that you can see here. In 2018, we funded 24 Dietrich students at $2,500 stipends for 10 weeks of half-time work. And after every organization reported back that our students were completely awesome and in many ways more valuable than the CS undergrads, the number of students in Pittsburgh orgs that applied for 2019 more than doubled, and in 2019 we funded 48 students. <clears throat> Again, the students and the organizations they worked for had such great experiences that the numbers on both sides increased, and in 2020, we had 58 students lined up with internships when COVID-19 hit. Amazingly, all but two internships went ahead anyway. Almost all of our students work remotely, and most had a great experience. Ask your advisor about PSIP and the approximately 20 other internships that we fund outside of Pittsburgh. So I'm very excited about this program, and I want to make it available to every student in the college in the future. I think it will be transformative. I just need to raise money to fund it. And I know you parents are all still in shock from the cost of a year at CMU. But if you're interested in helping me with this program, I would very much welcome it. Continuing on the same theme, how to use college to build a better life and a career. Let me again stress the importance of taking advantage of the intellectual breadth that Dietrich offers. As the New York Times made vivid, Studying the humanities is not just intellectually stimulating. Contrary to myth, it's highly practical. Why? Because to build a career, you need to know how to communicate, how to make things comprehensible to your audience, especially when the audience doesn't have the technical expertise that you do. The humanities take written communication to the next level. Take courses that involve writing, especially if you don't like to write. And what else does the 21st century world demand? Collaboration and teamwork. We have devoted a lot of time over the past few years to building interactive online modules on collaboration and teamwork. And we will be incorporating these modules into as many of your courses as we can. We are now working on modules to teach teamwork and collaboration in the online setting. Take it seriously. 
It's not a skill that comes naturally or easy to many, and it's especially challenging in a situation in which you are working on a highly diverse team. But the research is now vast and unequivocal. When handled constructively, diversity is an enormous benefit to a team and to an organization. And now let me say a few words about community. As a residential college, we are more than, in, than an intellectual and academic enterprise. We are also a community in which you will eventually live, eat, and hopefully have some fun. Let me reinforce remarks made by President Jahanian this morning about the sort of community we are and aspire to be, and how especially important this is in the time of COVID. You have heard about a tartan's responsibility, and you have learned about the pods you will quarantine with. We will all succeed or fail at keeping COVID at bay as a community. So let's take seriously the lessons from Notre Dame, UNC, and other universities who have already had to cancel all in-person classes because of outbreaks, largely caused by large indoor gatherings without masks or distancing. You have worked very hard to get here, and we have literally killed ourselves all spring and summer to be able to have you here in person safely. We are a community known for our common sense and our work ethic. Let's stay smart and let's keep that going. This spring and summer has not only been about COVID, but also about social justice. And let me read the same lines I have used in welcoming students to campus the last several years. They're more now relevant than ever. We are a community devoted to diversity and inclusion, and we reject all forms of bigotry and violence. We are an academic community, and for us, the key antiseptic is sunshine. Bigotry and racism are not cured by yelling insults and hurling tomatoes, but rather by respectful open dialogue in which facts and arguments are the tools we handle and civil discourse the conduct we model. We are not a progressive community that shuns conservatives and conservatives thought. We are not a conservative community that shuns progressive and progressive thought. We are an academic community which thrives on diversity of thought and does so openly and with respect. Our enemies are dogma and closed-mindedness, whether it be from the left or the right. It is up to us, all of us, as faculty, staff, and students, to continually strive to create a community in which all of us can thrive. We won't do this overnight, and it will not be a goal we reach. It's a process that we must embrace as forever ongoing. We're highly imperfect, and we'll always be so. But if we commit to work on ourselves relentlessly, then we will be a community that lifts the human condition rather than one that sets it back. So I look forward to meeting all of you in person, and I can't wait until that becomes the new, old normal. And with that, let me introduce our student speaker, Roshni Nishkal. Roshni is a senior in Dietrich College, studying psychology and cognitive neuroscience. Roshni is currently a member of the Dietrich Honors Fellowship Program, working on a senior thesis that will examine the contribution of visual pathways in the process of face recognition. She has also contributed to multiple research labs within Dietrich College and the greater Pittsburgh community. Roshni is an active student leader in multiple clubs on campus and is working as an orientation leader to welcome the class of 2024. While she grew up in London, Roshni now calls Pittsburgh home as she moved here with her family a few years ago. The weather is better. Her hobbies are writing, music, singing, playing the piano, playing tennis, and baking, which she has done a lot of during the quarantine. Roshni. Thank you so much for that introduction, Dean Chinas. Good morning, students and families. My name is Roshni Nistel, and as Dean Chinas said, I'm a senior in Dietrich College. Firstly, I want to say congratulations on beginning your journey at Carnegie Mellon University and at Dietrich. You're about to join a college that is uniquely interdisciplinary and is a supportive family, a family I was welcomed into with open arms on day one. In times like these, where so many things remain uncertain, I appreciate that sense of family so much more, and I'm thrilled to welcome you into our family. 
The summer before my first year, I had scheduled my first meeting with my acad academic advisor, Anna Maria. I was excited, but also very nervous to embark on my journey at CMU. I had no idea what I wanted to major in, and I had heard rumors that at CMU, you didn't really have much time to decide. Anna Maria asked me about my possible major options, and I listed out probably every single major that existed in Dietrich. We both laughed, and she assured me that things would work out. Anna Maria also quickly dispelled the rumors and told me I did, in fact, have time to figure things out. I had until the second semester of my sophomore year, which is a luxury that Dietrich has. A piece of advice I have for you first years is to not be afraid to try new things. Even if you already know what you'd like to major in, take a class in a completely different field and you never know what you might discover. After many meetings with Anna Maria and trying a lot of different courses, I finally declared psychology with a minor in cognitive neuroscience. Even though my primary advisor was now Dr. Marlene Berman in the psychology department, Anna Marie and I still to this day meet to just catch up on each other's lives, which is a testament to the Dietrich culture of family and of forming genuine personal connections. Starting the second semester of my first year, I joined Dr. Marlene Berman's lab, which focused on the cognitive basis of visual perception. This was my first research experience and was the beginning of yet another lifelong connection that Dietrich has given me. Dr. Berman quickly became my mentor, both academically and personally, and helped me grow as a researcher and as a student in general. We even played squash together, which is a special relationship to have with one's advisor. I have been fortunate to become even closer to Dr. Berman this summer as I began my research for my senior honors thesis, and I look forward to continuing to work closely with her throughout the rest of my time at CMU. Dietrich has also allowed me to continue to pursue my passion for social justice advocacy. On day two of my orientation, I met Ayana Ledford, who is Dietrich's Director of Diversity and Inclusion. She made a joke and greeted me with her infectious laugh. Ever since that moment, I knew I would form a strong relationship with her too, and we have in fact done just that. In addition to being part of my personal support system at CMU, Ayana has connected me with many opportunities, such as my internship at the Women's Law Project, which fights for the rights of women, girls, and members of the LGBTQ community, and introducing me to the Data Driven Diversity Lab, which uses psychology and behavioral economics to understand the experiences and sense of belonging of students of different identities at CMU. In addition to developing as a student academically, I've been able to excel in my extracurricular passions. I quickly discovered that although I have been part of many different organizations throughout my time at CMU, if you want to have an impact and have a deeply enriched experience, dedicating your focus and time on just a few main organizations is the way to go. After realizing this, I narrowed down my options and joined CMU SAS, a South Asian fusion all-female identifying a cappella team, where I've been able to continue my love for music and singing and been able to embrace my Indian heritage. And CMU Orm, CMU's Indian, Indian spiritual and cultural organization, which is responsible for planning and hosting large scale charity events pertaining to the South Asian culture and religious festivals. Our biggest event is the Holi event, which has more than 2000 guests and celebrates the Hindu festival of color during carnival. My leadership in both of these organizations are just two examples of how extracurriculars have helped me grow my abilities and develop crucial skills. Thinking back to these memories, I would have never thought that being in person without a mask and within six feet of people would be something I took for granted. When we went online in the second half of spring 2020, those meaningful relationships I had formed with my advisors, professors and friends reminded me of why I was so lucky to be in Dietrich. The mentors I previously mentioned all reached out to me to check in or to have a Zoom call. These small yet impactful actions made me feel supported and part of a community. Dr. Cody Mankey, the director of the Data Driven Diversity Lab, led group support sessions and discussions throughout the summer, pertaining to the horrific murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and countless black Americans by police. It was these meetings that made such overwhelming and disheartening times slightly more manageable. Although these are difficult times, we are still part of a community and together we can persevere. With that in mind, you are now part of our family. And I can only imagine the added stress the pandemic has caused on top of the usual nerves of starting college. As an orientation leader, I hope to virtually help with your transition and to still make orientation a memorable and enjoyable experience. As a student at CMU, I hope to be there for you in any way possible, and I really mean that. Whether that's if you have questions about academics, extracurriculars, or if you just want to have a distance or virtual coffee. Together, we will navigate and overcome these surreal times. And I look forward to seeing how you grow and make your impact in Dietrich and at CMU. I wish you all the best of luck, and I hope to meet you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Roshni. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Associate Dean Jay Devine. Jay is the Associate Dean of Undergraduate Studies. And as we like to say in the Dietrich Dean's office, Jay has such a great institutional memory 
that he's forgotten more about Dietrich College than any of us will ever know. He's been here for many, many years. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be friends with him for my time as dean and even before, and he has been fantastically important in connecting to our alums and guiding people through our pre-law program and doing many other things uh, as an associate dean. So, Jay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again. There was, a, there was a time when deans like me, after a warm introduction from uh, the likes of Dean Shinas, when deans like me would greet and try to motivate first year classes with sort of intimidation tactics, like suggesting that half of you might not be here in a year because you would, you would have an unsuccessful first year. The saying would go, look to your left, look to your right. In one year's time, one of you would not be here. One dean, in my experience, actually tried shame by telling us how much of our parents' tuition would be wasted for each class that we might decide to skip. It was actually $5 per class in those long bygone days. I have a feeling that decimal point in that calculation would move several positions to the right if we were to calculate that today. But times have changed. And we want to emphasize to you that you will be successful at Carnegie Mellon and in Dietra College and how you will be successful. But the question is how? How will you succeed? Unfortunately, I have no single secret that will guarantee your success here. Each of you will have such a unique journey here that I could not possibly offer you everything that you'd need to know in order to achieve the successes that you will no doubt have and reflect on and savor on your graduation day, which, by the way, will be May 19th at 11 a.m. in the year 2024 in Gesling Stadium, and we expect to see every one of you there. But I'll offer a few thoughts now that might be useful to you. I'm going to talk about paying attention, refresh and reflect, a little bit about symbolism, and a little bit about family. First, paying attention. I think of the term here called situational awareness, which is to say perceiving and understanding the environment critical to decision makers in complex dynamic contexts. Because if one thing changes in those contexts, everything changes. <clears throat> this is really important, for example, for pilots and air traffic controllers to prevent mid-air collisions. It's important for ship captains to prevent collisions at sea. It's why there are laws against texting while driving. It's why bicyclists, like me, should not be checking out their latest Instagram messages as that car door straight ahead is just getting ready to open. So the shorthand version of this phrase is simply, pay attention and not just to prevent bad things from happening, but also to not miss noticing and grasping the good things that will cross your path every day. This reminds me of the famous John Lennon quote, which is that life, happen life is what happens to you when you're busy making other plans. So pay attention, because you never know. Second, refresh and reflect. Take care of yourself. Get a good night's sleep every night. Eat a good round of meals every day. Get your flu and influenza shot in the fall and when it becomes available, your COVID-19 flu shot. Brush and floss every day. Do your laundry. Take note when time allows, the Cohen University Center's extension includes a lot of exercise equipment. There's a message there that wellness matters. Stepping away from your work at times to refresh. And while you're refreshing, reflect. Experts agree that total immersion in a hectic daily schedule without reflection hinders the ability to see a big picture and understand and appreciate the larger significance and meaning of life's experiences. So don't let that happen to you. Find time and a place and activity like Jogging, a jogging trail in Shenley Park, 
if you're here in Pittsburgh or a ride on the city's bike trails, maybe along the river, all the way down to the point. Explore on foot Pittsburgh's famed neighborhoods. Take a weekend afternoon and visit the Carnegie Museum just down the block. Or if you're working remotely, find hometown versions of these ideas. Step out of your busy daily routine. Pause and reflect. It's a great lifelong habit. So pay attention. Refresh and reflect. Let me talk now a little bit about symbolism. Did you know that each CMU college has a symbol or a banner to go with it? In the College of Fine Arts, it's a lion. In the Tepper School of Business, it's a fire-breathing dragon. In the School of Computer Science, it's a serpent of some kind. But in Dietrich College, it's the unicorn. Now, every now and then, someone wants to know why. Why the unicorn? And they usually wind up asking me, I suppose, because I have been here for so long. The truth is, I have no idea. I was here when it happened, and I suspect that the dean at the time picked it, but I really have no clue why he picked the unicorn. But if I were searching for a symbol, what could be better? The meaning of the unicorn is all about opening up to infinite possibilities and that infinite possibilities surround you and are available to you at all times. Many times you cannot see that possibility abound or even exist. The unicorn gives us the eyes to see those possibilities and the wisdom to take advantage of them. What could be better than a symbol that embodies that meaning? So pay attention, refresh and reflect, embrace the unicorn, and finally, think of your family. Students, consider what got you here. Now, each of you, of course, deserves enormous credit for all that you've done and accomplished that earned you a space in this first year class. There's no question about that. But think also about that ultimate support team that taught you to swim, to ride a bicycle, to drive, to throw a curveball, that taught you right from wrong, that taught you tolerance and decency and character. It's very true. We will offer amazing things for you here, and we're committed to supporting you in every possible way in your CMU journey. And here again, I point to the staff you met earlier that symbolizes our commitment to try to fill in for family and support you and, and your students in your personal Carnegie Mellon journey. There are academic advisors, there are assist, associate and assistant deans, special program directors, experts in student life and personal development, career exploration and planning. This group alone boasts over a dozen bachelor's and master's degrees, six doctoral degrees, and over 180 years of CMU experience. And all of this just to try to fill in for your family. So in truth, we're really just interim placeholders. They are your teachers for life. And I bet that they're really excited for you right now, but maybe also a little jealous. Maybe they're jealous because they've been to college themselves, maybe not. Either way, I bet they sense how special your experiences will be here and how thrilled they'd be to share it with you in one or more ways. It would still be your experience, students, but shared with them. So when you're in touch with them and they ask you, how's school? Don't just offer a one word answer by saying, fine, or good, or okay. Tell them. Family members, you can help too. You could read the Tartan, the CMU Weekly Student Newspaper comes out on Mondays, it's available online. So ask your, and talk with your son or daughter about what's going on here, what students are talking about, what they're arguing about, what they're asking about, what they care about. Students, think about sending your parents a copy of your course descriptions and syllabi. And family members, maybe you could read some of the same things that your student is reading. Consider some of the same questions that they're wrestling with. In other words, 
share their college experience. No extra tuition charge for that. So to recap, pay attention, refresh and reflect, embrace the unicorn and draw your family in. Once again, thank you for your time and attention and please accept our warm and sincere welcome to the college. We're thrilled that you're here and we relish the opportunity to work with you and to come to know you. This concludes our welcome event. Thank you for joining us today. And again, welcome to the class of 2024. Welcome.